In California, a vote comes up in November on Prop 19. That would legalize, regulate, and tax marijuana under California law, not federal law, have you? Uh, a poll out this week suggests most voters in that state are cool with legalizing pot, but support is slipping a little. So who would be hardest hit by Prop 19 being shot down? Those who truly need it for medicinal purposes and, of course, the makers of snack foods. Those for it see this as a way to drum up tax revenue. Others see pot as a gateway to harder drugs. I hit the streets to see what the buzz was on the plant with many a name. Reefer. Duda. Ganja. Herb. It's Mary Jane, huh? Mary Jane, <laughs> sir. Salad? That's what my, my dad calls it. <laughs> Bud. Pot. I'm here in an unnamed city in an unnamed store uh, where they have a section that sells products uh, solely for smoking tobacco. And show of hands, who knows what Prop 19 is? Does that ring a bell? Would you vote to legalize marijuana? Probably not. I would vote yes. I would probably be against it. A new study says it'll it'll save $8.7 billion in law enforcement. I just think it's silly how many people we have in prison because of that. Everybody does it. You might as well legalize everything. Let these people do what they want to do. You're going to do it anyway. And tax it. I mean, yeah, people are going to do what they want to do anyways. It, that's just crazy. Because people are smoking it, that's no excuse to continue to do wrong. Marijuana messes up your brain for two or three days. I worked for the railroad. Please don't smoke marijuana ever, sir, right. if you're driving the choo-choo. There's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't, it doesn't kill you. It's not like cigarettes that give you cancer. It's a leaf. It grows out the ground. It's a plant. All right. What does America look like if the whole country had legalized, regulated, taxed marijuana? Again, I think it'd be better. I don't think we need to legalize any intoxicant. Uh, uh, our bodies are, are so uh, uh, m marvelously made by the creator that we don't need to create anything else into our bodies anyway. God says that he gives every green bearing seed to mankind, which means every green bearing seed, every seed. What else does God say? Can you give me anything that God says that doesn't have to do with green bearing seeds? Yeah. Si buena suerte que se anule esa ley de la marihuana. I don't like it. What's the Spanish word for marijuana? Marihuana, tú. Well, Forbes calls her one of the most powerful women in the world. She's the co-founder of the Huffington Post, Ariana Huffington, joining us. And Todd Zwillick, a man with almost no power whatsoever, but he is one of the wonkiest wonks I've ever met. He's a Washington correspondent for the Public Radio International. Guys, thanks for joining us. Ariana, you're familiar with California. It is cash-strapped. Let's look at the economic reasons uh, alone for regulating tax of marijuana. What do you think? Well, the economic reasons, absolutely. It's not just the over $8 billion that we would be saving in law enforcement. It's also the over $8 billion that we would be making by taxing uh, marijuana. But beyond that, it's what um, someone else, one of, your, on one of the other people you asked uh, about it, um, told you, which is that we are filling our jails with nonviolent drug offenders, right. predominantly young, predominantly African-American. That's another big reason. And the third one is that it's a great beyond left and right issue. It has support across the political spectrum and um, also the support of the majority of the American people. Todd, Todd Zwillick, you're a great uh, political analyst. You look at numbers. Uh, what do you think happens? Will it pass? And a lot of people are saying this is the Democrats' uh, ballot initiative. Like, gay marriage and social issues got Republicans to the ballot back in, what, 2004? Yeah. Will this get Democrats to vote this issue in California? Well, look, I think this election, Pete, is still going to be about jobs and the economy. It makes sense that Democrats are looking for ways to get people out to the polls that aren't necessarily about jobs and the economy, because if they're in power, and the economy's in the tank, it's not going to look good for them, at least from the Washington perspective. Uh, look, I, I don't know if this is necessarily a Democratic or Republican issue. Those polls, as you mentioned, have tightened in recent weeks, and I think you've got 56 percent of Californians now saying they're for this. Um, you know, the savings, the $8.2 billion savings that's estimated, I think the actual numbers, if marijuana were legalized in California, would probably be, well, some, somewhat less than that. Look, the, the actual percentage of uh, people who are incarcerated in California for marijuana charges is really only 1%. Now, you could argue that that's 1% too many if you think that marijuana is a relatively benign substance compared to alcohol or compared to heroin or cocaine or harder right. substances. But it's, it's not like half the people in jail in California are there for marijuana charges. And the police in California, from what I've been reading and, uh, and, and gathering from the press there, 
uh, say that most of the marijuana charges come up, come up uh, pursuant to other charges, driving charges, weapons charges, that they're not really going after people primarily for marijuana. So I'm not sure about that $8 billion figure. Well, that $8 billion figure, I should say, is a national study from the Cato Institute. It's not just for California. But let, guys, let me just switch gears with you real quick and talk about our political plague of the week. Uh, this week, we're examining a disorder of intestinal fortitude. It's when candidates stop taking questions. They don't debate their opponents. And instead of running to the cameras, which we're used to, they're actually running from them. We're calling it irritable broadcast syndrome, IBS. It's our political plague of the week. Will this trend continue? Will, will politicians with, I, with IBS pull off victories in 2010 and then 2012 without taking questions, doing interviews and debating? I mean, guys, it's a time-honored condition that if you're the front runner, uh, not to make a mistake, not to debate, but Ariana, is, is this different this year? It is different because this year the front runners are those running against the incumbents because there's such anger at all establishments that provided you are not the person who is now in charge, you have a good chance of winning. So that means that as long as Sharon Angle or um, Christine O'Donnell does not actually step on a landmine of her own making by saying something which will basically haunt her until the election, and they've both said plenty of those things, but anymore, um, they may have a chance, uh, Sharon Angle obviously much more than Christine O'Donnell, of winning just because in Sharon Angle's case she's not Harry Reid. That's all that people are voting for. Clearly they're not voting for her positions, so she's not even clear what her positions are. But, in but Christine O'Donnell's case, I think she's made the additional problem of doing too much already with these ads which are being satirized everywhere like the especially the one about i'm not a witch are I'm you a witch you. ariana by the way we should ask i, I ask of all my guests i'm a white witch i'm uh, a white uh, witch todd, uh, todd's willick i mean but i know this is maybe a stupid question but doesn't it doesn't it really not a stupid question doesn't it hurt the democratic process if we're not having them answer questions and debate is there anything we can do to force them to debate and do interviews well of, of course it hurts the democratic process i mean hearing candidates positions on issues and positions that matter to us as voters, our pocketbooks, our towns, our streets, our, our, our two wars that are going on, those are of supreme importance. Look, we don't demand from our politicians that they debate. This election, every district is different, Pete. We all know that. But the 30,000 foot view is that this election is about, Ariana mentioned it, anger, anger and emotion. If right. you're running on anger at the incumbent or emotion and anger at the other guy, why would you debate? All you can do is step on a landmine, let the anger ride, right. let that wave Take ride a to knee, the shore. It doesn't benefit any of us out. to have that right. be our politics. Well, Ariana Hoppatin and Todd Willick, I love having you guys on. Thanks so much for joining me today. we got to wrap up and say goodbye, but thanks a lot, guys, for coming on. Uh, always a pleasure, Pete. Thank you. He was uh, quiet. He kept to himself. How often have you heard that after a criminal was busted? How a father of two living in suburban Connecticut plots to blow up Times Square right after the break. Let's show them what you're making.